Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel that Saves, a station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God, the Gospel that's only found in Paul's writings and his writings alone. And we know that Christ did everything necessary to save your soul. You trust his payment for your sins. Not your payment, right? You cannot earn salvation from your sins. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 confirms that in your King James Bible, 1769. There is only one payment for your sins that is acceptable to God. Colossians 1, 14 in your King James Bible, 1769. Jesus Christ made this payment on the cross when he bled and died for you, was buried and rose again from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and that's Paul's my gospel, and he declares it is his, and it's how ye are saved. If you choose to believe this and put your faith and trust in what Christ did for you, you will be saved. Ephesians 1.13 in your King James Bible 17.69. You have earned death and hell through your sins. God offers you eternal life and salvation through the blood of Christ. Trust Paul's My Gospel in 1 Corinthians 15.1-4 and your never dying soul will be saved. And today we are going to talk about part 4 of Holy smoke, holy water, holy days, and holy cow. And today we're going to talk about the holy days. When I was going to Harvest Translation Chapel, I don't call it Bible Chapel because they use no Bible. They use the ESV, which we know on this station is not a Bible. It is the product of the Alexandrian text. It comes from the Papyrus Manuscripts. And it went through Clement, Origen, Eusebius, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus. Notice Vaticanus, which is a product of the Vatican. From the Latin Vulgate to Jerome, the Alexandrius, the Reims and Dewey, the Greek and New Testaments. From Griesbach, Lachman, Tregels, and Tisendorf and Alford, and ultimately West Cotton Horst's Greek New Testament, which produced the Revised Version, which re produced the American Standard Version, which we know today is the New American Standard Version, which is also a product of the Jehovah Witness Bible. That is where all your corrupted modern versions come from. It's a product of your Roman Catholic, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, West Cotton Hort Greek text. And I'm sorry to say, that text is a product from the pit of hell, from the devil himself. And today, you're probably thinking, what's the big deal about days, months, times, and years, right? When I was at Harvest Translation Chapel, it was no big deal. We had a couple that had a pine tree farm, and they would take one of their freshly cut trees and put it in the center of our foyer over at Harvest. And we would have Luke chapter 2 read, and it was all about the birth of Christ, and celebrating on December 25th, and the days were very important there. There's no doubt. We had Valentine's Day dances, we had Mother's Day celebrations, we had Father's Day celebrations, and so that is why I'm covering the holy days. Now, you've probably heard this term in your workplace, diversity, right? Celebrating differences in the workplace, right? Civilizations around the world have been celebrating the start of each new year for at least four millennia. Today, most New Year's festivities begin on December 31st, the last day of the Gregorian calendar, and continue into the early hours of January 1st, New Year's Day. Common traditions include tending parties, eating special New Year's foods, making resolutions for the new year, and watching fireworks displays, right? Well, January 1st is the day many Buddhists of all traditions celebrate Temple Day by going to the temple to pay their respects and pray for good fortune for the coming year. Happy Guru Nanak birthday! Sikh Sikhism preaches that people of different races, religions, or sects are all equal in the eyes of God. It teaches the full equality of men and women. January 6th, many Christians around the world celebrate Epiphany. It is a public holiday in many countries. It marks two events in Jesus Christ's life, according to the Christian Bible. Hmm, what's the Christian Bible? Is that another new translation they came up with? The first event was when the three wise men, three, 
That's funny, it doesn't say three in my Bible. It never gives a number, but I guess these guys have the original text. Or kings visiting infant Jesus. The second ad event was when St. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. The Armenian Church celebrates the holy birth of Jesus Christ on January 6th. In Armenian tradition, the feast day commemorates not only the birth of Christ, but also his baptism by John the Baptist. January 13th, many Americans pay tribute to one of the United States' finest musicians on Stephen Foster Memorial Day. Stephen Foster was a songwriter who lived in the 19th century. His songs such as, Oh Susanna and My Old Kentucky Home, are still popular in modern homes. January 14th, India celebrates the sun's journey into the northern hemisphere. Happy Markar Sankranti! Happy Markar Sankranti! My wish for you is that you always soar high, just like the kites in the sky. Isn't that nice? January 14th is the Orthodox New Year, also known as the Old New Year, according to the Julian calendar. Many Orthodox Christians who observe the New Year's date, date from the Julian calendar, may spend the day reflecting on the previous year and think about meaningful resolutions for the New Year. Many people celebrate the day with family or friends to welcome the New Year. Acts that include fireworks, large meals, and music entertainment. January 17th is World Religion Day. It is an interfaith observance initiated in 1950 by the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha of the United States, celebrated worldwide on the third Sunday in January each year. Through initiated, though initiated in the United States, World Religion Day has come to be celebrated internationally. Baha'i beliefs address the oneness of God and religion, the oneness of humanity and freedom from prejudice, the inerrant nobility of the human being. On this holiday, January 18th, we commemorate the universal, unconditional love, forgiveness, and nonviolence that empowered Dr. King's revolutionary spirit. It is a day of interracial and intercultural co cooperation and sharing. No other day of the year brings so many peoples from different cultural backgrounds together in such a vibrant spirit of brother and sisterhood. Whether you are African American, Hispanic, or Native America, whether you are Caucasian or Asian America, you are part of the great dream Martha Luther King Jr. had for America. January 19th, Americans celebrate Robert E. Lee Day. So far from engaging in a war to perpetuate slavery, I am rejoiced that slavery is abolished. I believe it will be greatly for the entrance of the South. So fully am I satisfied of this, that I would have cheerfully lost all that I have lost by the war, and have suffered all that I have suffered to have this object attained. Clearly, Robert E. Lee was against Andrew Jackson, who was a Democrat, who was one of the founders of slavery in this country. But who cares about history, right? And who cares about the democratic history? I would encourage you to study that if you're a Democrat. January 25th, the Jewish community celebrates Tu B'Shevet. Tu B'Shvat. This festival is also known as the New Year for Trees. Many Jewish communities in the United States observe the festival by eating fruit and planting trees on this day. The Torah praises seven fruits, in particular grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. Last day I'm going to talk about. Are you tired of the holy days yet? January 26th, or should I say holidays? January 26th, Australia Day commemorates the establishment of the first European settlement at Port Jackson in 1788. On this day in 1788, Captain Arthur Phillip first raised the British flag at Sydney Cove. Recognized as the National Day of Australia, it is a day given to large celebrations and is one of the most widely celebrated holidays in the country. So as we observe some of the holy days, holidays, just in January. Would you think maybe it's part of the holidays or Hollywood or maybe idolatry? You ever think of considering any of those items? There are 15 verses in the Bible that contain the words holy days. Exodus 29.30 
And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he cometh into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. And again, these are verses that contain the word holy and days, okay? Exodus 29, 37. Seven days thou shalt make it atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Excuse me. Exodus 31, 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Exodus 35, 2. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Leviticus 23.3, six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. And by the way, if you're first coming to this station, you're brand new, all these verses are referred to from God's perfectly preserved word, which we put above his name, Psalm 138.2. The King James Bible, 1769. Psalm chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. It's perfect and without error. Okay? And that makes me different right there because you can look at so many people like Max Lucado, who has a new book called Because of Bethlehem. On the back he writes, I love Christmas. Let the sleigh bells ring, let the carolers sing, let more mistletoe the merrier, the more trees the better. I love Christmas. I love it because somewhere someone will ask the Christmas questions. What's the big deal about the baby in the manger? Who was he? What does his birth have to do with me? How about the question, how come I can't find Christmas in my Bible? Why does Christ have mass on the end of it? You know, there's never questions about the Roman Catholic Mass, because that's what Christmas is about. But Max Lucado loves days, months, times, and years. And it's sad. And the point I'm getting at is, is when you read this book and you go through it, he uses the New Century Version. He uses the New King James Version. He uses the New Living Translation. And then he also puts verses in here without any verse, without any references to what translation it comes out. So he is a person who any Bible version is satisfactory, which makes no version true. Isn't that nice? So anyway, let's continue. Leviticus 23.8, but you shall have you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Leviticus 23.36 Seven days ye shall have an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Number 6, 5. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separateth himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow. Number 6, 8. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. Numbers 29, 12. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work, and you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. First Samuel 21.5 And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth woman have been kept from us about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. And I just wanted to point out that we are back in the prophetic program under Israel's old covenant law. And these verses are all about Israel, but we're getting definition of holy and days from them. Okay, because you can get, there's three applications to every Bible verse. There's historical application, there's doctrinal application, and there's spiritual application. We're getting historical application from Israel's Old Testament doctrine. We're defining the words holy and days. Okay, I wanted to make that clear. In case you're wondering why we're back here. Well, this is where most denominational, non-denominational places are. They're all in Israel's Old Testament doctrine. 
which is all prophetic, claiming that it's theirs today. But they don't claim these verses because if they did, they would not be separated. They would be separated unto God and not following all these days, months, times, and years, just by definition of these verses. But that's a whole nother story, which we'll talk about a little bit in this message. Isaiah 63, 11. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? And Daniel 5.11, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and that's lowercase g, and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father the king, I say thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. And Acts 1.5, and there you go, in case you're wondering if magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers are anything of God, no. That verse tells you they are not. Acts 1.5, For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So you can get a little definition of holy and days from those 15 verses, but let's look at what the Roman Catholic Encyclopedia says about holy days on page 267. Known as holy days of obligation, these are the days that is required that the members of the Catholic faith who have attended the age of reason rest from servile work and attend holy mass. Would that be the Christ mass? The apostolic see alone and declare, transfer or abolish holy days of obligation for the universal church. Those established now are all Sundays, the Solemnity of Christmas, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. Wow, God has a mommy? The Epiphany, the Ascension, Corpus Christi, etc. The feasts observed as holy days of obligation in the United States besides Sunday are the Immaculate Conception, which is December 8th, Christmas, which is December 25th, and Mary, the Mother of God, which is January 1st, and All Saints, which is November 1st. Notice the Conception, Immaculate Conception, is December 8th. Then Jesus' birthday is December 25th? Wow, what happened to the nine months? Oops. So, I cannot find birthday in my Bible, nor Christmas. Jesus never said to celebrate his birthday, nor follow the Christ Mass. When you follow the course of Abiah in Luke with Zacharias the priest who is married with children, you learn that, that's right, a priest who is married with children. Oops, so much for your Catholic priest, right? And learn that John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. When you do the math, Jesus then is born in late September. The Catholics have it right that the conception was December. Count nine months from the conception, and you have September. Bullinger, E.W. Bullinger, even confirmed this in his companion Bible in 1922. So this is clearly a tradition, not a reality, when it comes to being a Bible believer. So all you people who are following Jesus, what did he say about traditions? Now we know Jesus was talking to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the circumcision, and his own, right? Matthew 15, Romans 15, verse 8, and John chapter 1, right? But we have people today who do not read and study their Bible and can care less about context and think Jesus was talking to them today. So here are the verses for the people who can care less about doctrine. Notice who this is written to. For the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tr tradition of the elders. Wow, but this is every church goer in America, right? How about Mark 7, 5, 8, 9, and 13? Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Every churchgoer in America love their traditions, just like Max Lucado, right? I love Christmas. Thus, making the word of God of none effect, right? Mark 7.13 making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Note, 
This was before the cross. Israel's program, but we can get definition from our Lord that it is not a good thing to follow traditions. Most today have made their Bibles of none effect, can care less about the translation issue, right? They can care less. Mark 7.13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Paul says something similar after the cross about the cross of Christ in the dispensation of grace according to the revelation of the mystery, right? Romans 16.25. 1 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. So wisdom of words makes the cross of Christ none effect. Making the word of God of none effect by tradition. Notice, water baptism is done, and the preaching of the gospel, the cross, is what needs to be done. Right? For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Romans 16.25, To him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. And what does Paul say about traditions of men? Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So, clearly, the traditions of man, and I read you a dozen holy days, holidays, that are going to take place just in this month alone, January. Then I have a famous celebrity, so-called Christian, I don't think the man is saved, but that's my opinion, Max Lucado, who just loves Christmas, which is a Roman Catholic Christ Mass, and by the way, Christ was never in the Mass. Christ was never in Christmas. It's not in your Bible. It is a tradition of man, and Jesus Christ in Mark made it very clear that if you follow your traditions, you'll make the Word of God of none effect, and by definition, that is absolutely true. When you talk to people that God made a Bible that's perfectly preserved without error, that is none effect to them. They could care less. And then when you preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, that is none effect to them too. So God's word is always true. Thanks again for listening. As we cover holy days, we will take a look at the topic a little more and conclude holy days and then we will jump right into holy cow batman thanks again for listening email me with any doctrinal questions through my website at preaching the gospel that saves that com. don't forget to subscribe to my channel thanks again